Hey, what's up, fam? Rolling into week six of my Mishimaverse project. Let me kind of just recap that really quick for those who don't know. I have a, I have a fan theory through that with the creation of Eden Zero, Hero Mishima can and hopefully will connect all his series into one kind of large universe, similar to how DC Comics and Marvel Comics, you know, put a lot of their series all together into, you know, one big you know, cogged linked machine that all connects to each other. And now I'm on to Aki. I've, I've done a couple stuff so far, obviously. This is week six. But for the most part, the other ones have been one shots other than Rave Master, Hiromashima's first big success. And here we have the short story it's Monster Soul. It's a two volume story. It takes kind of center around this group called the Black Heirs, which were a uh, group within a monster army and here we have the main character and youngest and kind of most kid-like of the Hiromashima main characters the c character Aki who those who don't know Hiromashima he likes to name a lot of his characters after seasons this first one being Haru you know Haru meaning summer he's got Natsu meaning f uh, summer and he's got Aki meaning fall you know fall or autumn I don't know which one of the two is. I'm pretty sure it's uh, Fall. And uh, obviously now that we've got a... Not a main character, but Toka, Winter. And, of course, Shiki of Four Seasons. And the thing about Aki that honestly makes him uh, different than a lot of the other main characters. Obviously, there's, there's similar stuff. He's got the whole... Cares a lot about his friends thing. He's got the friendship kind of uh, value aspect to him, as they all do. You know, it's just here, Mishima. It's what he likes. For his main characters, but Aki is he's very childish at a, in his crew he's he seems to be the youngest, he seems to be the, the most immature it's doing things like uh, one of the guys in his group is this uh, Frankenstein, he's literally classified as a Frankenstein, they're arm wrestling and then Aki uses his power which if you look at him, he has this kind of human form, his base form which is, uh, it's, it's, it's talking about how it's, it's impressive. That he's faster than the human eye, but he's not that strong. And you can just, uh, there's, there's a part where some guy, like, pulls a gun on him. He's like, you go ahead and shoot me, none of the bullets will hit me. And then it goes to the next panel, and he got shot, like, four times. But then he's got his soul form, which is what makes him extremely powerful, as being this S-class monster, a dire wolf. And I actually thought it was funny because, uh, I think they use the same symbol for money as jewels in fairy tale. So this this could easily fit into the fairy tale world, you know, expand it out a little bit. And you could put all this within uh, maybe like some small country where it's like isolated from the world. And so some of the the stuff doesn't uh, there's a little bit in there that could uh, could do something to the world, could affect the fairy tale world, but nothing that would uh, be you know life altering. Now. Like I said, with with uh, Aki, he he seems a bit childish. There's a, for instance, again, there's a, a point where he's hungry. So he, while well, they're at kind of this rally, and the, his group wants to try and calm down this monster revolutionary uh, like coalition, they want to go attack human towns because in their world, it takes place post war between humans and monsters. The humans won, and the monsters kind of like live in their own areas. And the monsters want to get revenge, go take over, and uh, go, you know, get what they think is theirs. And obviously his group is like, we don't need to be fighting anymore. It's it's over. We can just try and coexist. And while there, he actually, uh, he goes and, for one, picks up their their flag, their, their group's flag, breaking it, and then threatens to break it if they didn't give him food. He, like, throws, like, a small tantrum. And then he does things like jump the gun like anybody who, uh, one dude, Garo Elf, who was very mean to them as a child, bullied them, and essentially uh, upset him by being threatening towards his kind of older sister character, Mummy, who is like the prototype for Urza, a lot of her characteristics follow Urza, but just being, you know, this guy being kind of a... Uh, an issue with her, Aki just jumps to that he's going to murder him. Literally saying he's going to murder him, not he's going to kick his ass. He's just like, yeah, I'm going to kill this dude. And Aki, he's a he seems like an alright guy. He's 
uh, he has an unfortunate backstory, like most. He, uh, he was his village was attacked, and his parents had their souls stolen from this uh, creature called a soul leader. This guy named Biel's, who left him to kind of grow up, get stronger, and so the next time he saw him, he's hopefully all that rage and uh, will kind of pile up, make him extremely powerful, so he could take his soul when it's like in its uh, most ripened prime state. Now Aki uses a his own form of martial arts called Dire Fist, which the thing about this is I think that it would have worked as uh, as well as as it could have in this as a series, is because his his power doesn't seem to have a very kind of consistent flow to it. Like his first attack is like a t- tornado, and then he's got like a thunderclap and an earthquake, and then like he's got like an eruption. He's got like a c- combo like flurry of punches. There was no. There's no consistency, I'd say, to how his power worked. It's not like, okay, here's Haru, he's got these swords that do specific things. Here's Natsu, he's he's got dragon slaying magic that, you know, he's got fire, it buffs him. He's got a couple ranged attacks. He's got mostly melee. Here's Shiki, Shiki's got gravity powers. You know, he's going to focus around, like, versatility, like, increasing gravity for punches, you know, lightning gravity for lifting things. And I'd, I'd say the problem with uh, Aki's power is there was nothing to kind of set it. It looked like they were just kind of making up stuff as it went. And it was unfortunate because uh, from what I gathered while reading, because I, I own the official volumes, while reading it, that they were going to you know, take this and then publish it as a normal series instead of just this short two-volume two story, take the whole topic, take the idea, and publish it within... Uh, the mag a different magazine as a normal series by a different author and here machine was kind of going to be like a kind of like he is now with the fairy tale 100 years quest where he's like this admin you know he, he makes sure stuff is solid and then he you know and then he goes with whatever's going on and it you know would count as its own universe and i think that's i think that's something he could do now maybe pick this back up you know add aki to the fray now that he's got uh haru natsu Toka and Shiki, you know, he's missing missing Autumn, and he could just uh, have another writer work on this. Maybe after uh, Happy's Adventure, the guy who's working on that, whose name I, I always forget, who did Buster Keel, could do this. I think this would work for him very well, given his uh, his run on Buster Keel, if you ever read that. I think it would work with this, and it would, I think it'd be cool to add them in into the, uh, into the fairy tale world, or at least in the idea of the Mashima verse. I'd like to see Aki with the the rest of the the seasonal named crew. I think he had a good addition. He's definitely the he definitely stand out just given that kind of he's got a very childish nature to him. He's he's a little bit petty. He's the you know he's the the smallest and youngest of his crew. He's the younger brother type, and I think it would go well with uh, people like Natsu and and, and Haru. So that's what I'm going to go for now. So that is week six of the. Of my whole Mishima verse thing. I'm looking forward to next week. Next week will be the big man himself, Natsu Dragneel. So, thank you very much for listening. Maybe check out my other videos. If you've gotten this far, I do mostly manga and a, a little bit of comics. Uh, Fairy Tale, Eden Zero, Black Clover kind of stuff with some other manga in there. Um, if you're subscribed to my channel already, uh, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And if you aren't subscribed already, I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe. But otherwise, like I said, thank you for listening. Bye.